We need to find all pairs of non-negative integers, m and n, that satisfy this equation. The structure, a mix of polynomial and exponential terms, suggests a number theory approach. The equation contains terms with m squared and m. This structure allows us to rearrange it into a quadratic equation in the variable m. We will now rearrange the equation into the standard quadratic form. The original equation is as follows. By moving all terms to the left-hand side, we obtain a standard quadratic equation set to zero. This equation fits the form a m squared plus b m plus c equals zero. Here, the coefficient a is one. b is the negative of the quantity two to the power of n plus one minus one, and c is two times three to the power of n. Since m must be an integer, the solutions given by the quadratic formula must also be integers. This imposes a significant constraint on the discriminant of the equation. Applying the quadratic formula yields the following expression for m. For m to be an integer, the expression under the square root, the discriminant, must be a perfect square of a non-negative integer. The core constraint is on the discriminant. We will define it as d and require it to be a perfect square, which we denote as k squared for some non-negative integer k. The discriminant, d, is calculated from the coefficients b and c. Setting d equal to k squared gives us this equation. Observe the structure of this equation. It contains two squared terms. This suggests rearranging it to form a difference of squares. Rearranging the terms yields a difference of squares on the left-hand side. The utility of this form is that the left side can be factored. Factoring the difference of squares yields a product of two integer factors, which must equal 8 times 3 to the power of n. For simplicity, let's define these two factors as a and b. We define a as the smaller factor and b as the larger factor. Consequently, the product a times b is equal to 2 cubed times 3 to the power of n. We can deduce properties of a and b by examining their sum and difference. The difference b minus a is equal to 2k, which is an even number. This implies that a and b must have the same parity. Their product is even, so they cannot both be odd. Since they share the same parity, it follows that both a and b must be even. This conclusion is significant. Both a and b are even factors of the product. This constraint severely limits their possible forms. Therefore, a and b must have prime factorizations of this form, where the exponents a and c sum to 3, and b and d sum to n. Specifically, a plus c equals 3, and b plus d equals n. The condition that both a and b are even implies that their respective exponents of 2 a and c must be at least 1. The only partition of 3 into two positive integers is 1 and 2. This splits the analysis into two distinct scenarios for the exponents a and c. In the first scenario, we set a equal to 1 and c equal to 2. By definition, b is the larger factor. By summing a and b, we can establish a direct relationship with the variable n. We substitute the forms of a and b for this scenario into the sum equation. Each term in this equation is divisible by 2. Therefore, we can simplify it by dividing through by 2. This simplification results in an exponential Diophantine equation relating b, d, and n, where n equals b plus d. We must now prove that b equals 2 and d equals 3 is the only solution. We will analyze the equation for different values of b. For b equals 0, the equation simplifies to 3 to the d plus 1 equals 2 to the d. This has no solution for non-negative integers d. For b equals 1, we check values. d equals 1 gives 5 versus 4. d equals 2 gives 11 versus 8. For any larger d, the left side grows much faster. A formal proof by induction confirms no solutions exist here. For b equals 2, we test d.
for d equals 3, we get 27 plus 5 equals 32 on the left, and 4 times 8 equals 32 on the right. We have found a solution. For d greater than 3, the right side, 4 times 2 to the d, grows much faster than the left side. Similarly, for b greater than 2, no solutions can be found. Therefore, we have rigorously proven that b equals 2 and d equals 3 is the unique solution for this scenario. This unique solution gives us n equals b plus d, which is 5. We verify this solution. For the left-hand side, we substitute b equals 2 and d equals 3, which sums to 63. Now for the right-hand side, with an equals 5. The exponent becomes 6. And the right-hand side is also 63. The solution is confirmed. Having confirmed an equals 5 is a valid case, we now calculate the corresponding values of m. First, we calculate k from the difference between b and a. Evaluating the powers in the numerator, then performing the multiplications and simplifying. Finally, this gives k equals 45. We now substitute an equals 5 and ek equals 45 into the formula for m. The first potential solution for m uses the positive sign. This gives them equals 54. The second potential solution uses the negative sign. This gives them equals 9. This scenario yields the pairs 54, 5, and 9, 5. Now we analyze the second scenario, where a equals 2 and c equals 1. Again, we substitute the forms for a and b into their sum equation. As before, every term is divisible by 2, allowing for simplification. Dividing by 2 results in a second Diophantine equation. To solve this efficiently, we'll use a powerful number theory tool, modular arithmetic. Let's analyze the equation's remainders when divided by 3. If b is 0, our equation becomes this. We also require d to be greater than zero. Checking small values shows no solutions exist, and an inductive proof confirms that for d greater than or equal to two, the left side is always larger than the right side. So, b cannot be zero. Having ruled out that b equals zero, we now know both b and d must be positive integers. This key insight allows us to analyze the equation using its remainders when divided by three. Assuming b and d are at least 1, both of these terms are perfectly divisible by 3, so their remainder is 0. The equation simplifies dramatically. Rearranging gives us 2 to the n plus 1 must have a remainder of 1 when divided by 3. Since 2 is negative 1 modulo 3, this means the exponent, n plus 1, must be an even number. This is a powerful constraint. This constraint forces n to be odd. We have already confirmed the solution at n equals 3. A check of subsequent odd values for n reveals no further solutions, as the right-hand side of the equation quickly outgrows the left. Consequently, n equals 3 is the only solution in this scenario. We verify by substituting b equals 1 and d equals 2 into the left-hand side. The powers evaluate to 9 and 3. The multiplication yields 6. The sum is 15. The right-hand side with an equals 3 is 2 to the 4th power minus 1. This is 16 minus 1, which equals 15. The solution is confirmed. With an equals 3 confirmed, we proceed to find the corresponding values for m. We calculate k for this scenario. First, evaluating the powers and simplifying this gives k equals 3. We substitute n equals 3 and ek equals 3 into the formula for m. The first solution comes from addition. This yields m equals 9. The second solution comes from subtraction. This yields m equals 6. This scenario provides the pairs 9, 3, and 6, 3. Algebra provides the proof, but a graph can provide intuition. For the case n equals 3, 
The original equation simplifies to m squared plus 54 equals 15m. Plotting the left-hand side a parabola and the right-hand side a line reveals their intersection points. These points occur at m equals 6 and m equals 9, visually confirming the integer solutions derived algebraically. It is prudent to verify one of the solution pairs in the original equation. We will test the pair where m is 6 and n is 3. First, we evaluate the left-hand side by substituting m equals 6 and n equals 3. The powers evaluate to 36 and 27. Next, we perform the multiplication. The sum gives 90. Now we evaluate the right-hand side. The exponent becomes 4. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. The value in the parenthesis is 15. The final product is 90. The sides are equal, so the solution is correct. This analysis, beginning with a quadratic formulation and proceeding through the discriminant and a difference of squares, has yielded the complete set of solutions. There are precisely four pairs of non-negative integers that satisfy the initial equation. The problem illustrates how an equation with a simple appearance can contain a rich number theoretic structure, which can be unraveled through systematic deduction. Thank you for joining us for this problem. If you found this analysis interesting, please consider subscribing for more content.